The biggest unresolved question about the interstellar object 3i Atlas involves the size of its nucleus. A.V. Loeb emphasized this point in a recorded discussion with Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna and Peter Scaffish and a podcast with Brian Keating and Michael Shermer. Pause for a few seconds and support me with a subscribe. One would have hoped to get clues about the nature of 3i Atlas from the plume of gas around it. Data from the Webb Space Telescope, the SphereX Space Observatory, and the Very Large Telescope show that this plume stretches out to a vast scale of at least 35,000 kilometers and is composed primarily of carbon dioxide, CO2, 87% by mass, carbon monoxide, CO, 9%, water, H2O, most of the remaining 4%, and traces of cyanide, CN, as well as nickel without iron, as found in the industrial production of nickel alloys through the carbonyl chemical pathway. However, such a plume could emanate from a natural icy rock or a technological source. That this plume of gas is shaped by the solar radiation and solar wind to a teardrop shape, as observed last week by the Gemini South Telescope, is a straightforward consequence of gas dynamics and not a clue about the nature of the nucleus. The situation is akin to observing a plume of smoke carried by the wind. Without a resolved image of the source of the smoke, we cannot tell whether it originates from a burning log of wood or the exhaust of a car. The sharpest image of 3i Atlas so far was obtained on July 21, 2025 by the Hubble Space Telescope. It showed a glow of scattered sunlight ahead of the nucleus towards the sun, but no tail in the opposite direction. The sun-facing glow on that date could not have been dominated by refractory dust with a particle size comparable to the wavelength of sunlight because solar radiation pressure would have pushed the dust within a day to trail 3i Atlas in the shape of a typical cometary tail. That such a tail was not observed on July 21, 2025 beyond the transverse width of the glow implies that the scattering of sunlight was dominated by icy fragments that evaporated before they had an opportunity to trail 3i Atlas. The main open question is, which fraction of the reflected sunlight originates from these icy fragments compared to the solid surface of the nucleus of 3i Atlas? The brightness of 3i Atlas at a wavelength of 1 micrometer implies a nucleus diameter of 46 kilometer for a typical albedo of 4%. However, if 99% of the brightness stems from icy fragments around 3i Atlas, then the nucleus diameter is 10 times smaller of order 5 kilometers. But even in this reduced size case, the mass carried by 3i Atlas is still a thousand times bigger than that carried by the previous interstellar object 2i Borisov, whose diameter was estimated to be 0.5 kilometers. The mass loss rate from 3i Atlas is a few times bigger than that from 2i Borisov, whereas its surface area is larger by a factor ranging between 100 for a 5 kilometer diameter to 1000 for a 46 kilometer diameter. The activity of 3i Atlas is very weak when calibrated by its large surface area. In order to assess how anomalous 3i Atlas is, it is essential to measure the size of its nucleus. So, how can we accomplish this task? On October 3, 2025, 3i Atlas will pass at a distance of 29 million kilometers from the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The camera's 0.5-meter aperture will be able to image 3i Atlas with a resolution of 30 kilometers per pixel. The glowing cloud around 3i Atlas is optically thin, transparent. Hence, the total luminosity emanating from the central pixel in the high-rise image will provide a strict upper limit on the nucleus brightness and hence its size better by two orders of magnitude than the Hubble Space Telescope image. Fortunately, the trajectory of 3i Atlas is aligned to within 5 degrees from the ecliptic plane, allowing it to arrive not only close to Mars but also within 54 million kilometers from Jupiter on March 16, 2026. These remarkable circumstances bring 3i Atlas also close to the Juno spacecraft around Jupiter. We cannot expect the mountain to come to Muhammad routinely. In the context of future interstellar objects coming close to human-made probes, unless we are visited by alien probes which target solar system planets, 
For random trajectories with a high inclination angle relative to the ecliptic plane, such as in the cases of the first two interstellar objects, 1i Umuamua, 122.8 degrees, or 2i Borisov, 44 degrees, the task of resolving an interstellar object in a close-up image would be far more challenging than for 3i Atlas. It would be necessary to design an interceptor with a camera similar to high-rise that maneuvers to arrive at the right time within a distance of a million kilometers from the expected path, an interstellar object like 3i Atlas, in order to get a pixel resolution of one kilometer for the nucleus. A future NASA mission could aim to deploy such an interceptor in a waiting position for the future harvest of interstellar objects expected from the Rubin Observatory. Let's pause for a few seconds and give me a like for this video. Thank you so much. 3i Atlas Comet is the third interstellar object, ISO, to pass through the solar system, the previous two being 1i Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, which arrived in 2017 and 2019 respectively. Like its predecessors, the arrival of 3i Atlas highlighted just how common these objects are and inspired mission concepts for studying them up close. The latest comes from the Southwest Research Institute, SWRI, where a team has developed a mission study for a spacecraft that could perform a flyby with 3i Atlas. Asteroids and comets are essentially material left over from the formation of the solar system roughly 4.6 billion years ago. The study of ISOs could therefore tell us a lot about what conditions are like in other star systems without having to send missions to explore them. Using the recent discovery of 3i Atlas as a basis, the SWRI determined that this latest ISO could have been intercepted and observed by their proposed spacecraft. Relying on previous ISO detections, their internally funded SWRI study also lays out the design, scientific objectives, payload, and key requirements for such a mission. The study was led by Dr. Alan Stern, a planetary scientist and the SWRI Associate Vice President. Stern is well known for being the principal investigator of the New Horizons mission, which made the first flyby in history with Pluto in July 2015. He and his SWRI colleagues previously conducted a concept study for an interstellar object explorer, IOE, detailed in a paper released in February 2024. With the detection of 3i Atlas a little over a year and a half later, he and his colleagues are once again exploring how future missions might intercept and study ISOs. Their latest proposal, said Stern, is for an interstellar comet explorer. These new kinds of objects offer humankind the first feasible opportunity to explore bodies formed in other star systems closely. An ISC flyby could give unprecedented insights into these objects' composition, structure, and properties, and it would significantly expand our understanding of solid body formation processes in other star systems. One of the main constraints of their study was that the spacecraft would not be able to orbit a future ISO owing to the hyperbolic trajectories and velocities involved. However, their analysis showed that a flyby reconnaissance mission was feasible, affordable, and would provide immense scientific returns. To determine trajectory options for the mission, the team relied on sub-URI-developed software that simulates a population of ISCs, then calculates the minimum energy trajectory from Earth to intercept each simulated comet. According to WRI orbital mechanics expert, Dr. Mark Tapley, the simulations showed that a low-energy rendezvous was possible. They also indicated that the ice would require less launch velocity and in-flight trajectory changes than many robotic missions currently exploring the solar system. The very encouraging thing about the appearance of 3i Atlas is that it further strengthens the case that our study for an ISC mission made, he said. We demonstrated that it doesn't take anything harder than the technologies and launch performance, like missions that NASA has already flown to encounter these interstellar comets. Needless to say, the scientific returns of such a mission would be immense. Detailed data on the ISC's composition would provide a wealth of information about its formation and evolution, providing insight into its system of origin and the interstellar medium. As the ISC nears the sun, 
it will form a large tail as water and other frozen volatiles sublimate, triggering outgassing and the formation of a coma. The spacecraft could examine this coma using spectrometers to learn what lies beneath the ISC's icy surface, said WRI's Matthew Freeman, the study's project manager. The trajectory of 3I Atlas is within the interceptable range of the mission we designed, and the scientific observations made during such a flyby would be groundbreaking. The proposed mission would be a high-speed, head-on flyby that would collect a large amount of valuable data and could also serve as a model for future missions to other ISCs. Studies have shown that about seven ISOs pass through the inner solar system annually, though some models place that number higher. These same studies showed that as many as 1,000 ISOs pass inside Neptune's orbit annually, some of which are captured by the solar system's gravity, and stay here. As new facilities like the Vera Rubin Observatory conduct surveys that reveal tens of thousands of objects, astronomers expect to find many more ISOs.